What was your hurriest moment working for Arthur Thompson? The what? The hurriest, the mo like most dangerous moment working. The most for dangerous him. moment. Yeah. Uh, the most dangerous moment. It's got to be firearms, right? Uh, because he used to make bullets up in the back garden, and we'd go out and test them. But this, this particular time, I'm not driving. Tom Begin's driving. Arthur Thompson Junior's in the back seat. I'm in the passenger seat. So we get into these country roads, and he pops the sunroof open, <laughs> and he's shooting at thirty mile an hour signs and. What other signs? But what he forgets is the casings. No, <laughs> one went down the back of Tom, <laughs> Tom Vegan's foot. And he said, Look to me, man, fucking had enough of this cunt. <laughs> you can still swear, can you? Have enough of this cunt. <laughs> so mm -hmm. he, he said, Watch this. So he's pressed the, the sunroof, because he was kind of portly, Tom. So he's pressed the sunroof and he's jammed in. And he just start. Tom starts rallying it. Around the country, and you hear Thompson shout, Thompson Junior shouting, "You don't fucking slow down! I'll tell my dad." <laughs> so that's if you make it. So Harry Ars time, probably things like that, or going into areas to collect money. <laughs> you don't know. You don't even know if you're getting back. Out. You know, have you get have you get that money there. Uh, no. For when you're going to have it, uh, can you? T I'm not telling them anything. You better tell them. There was no violence, you get all those things, but Arthur, Arthur Jr. did go in one meeting and cut a guy's face on his front door for nothing. You know, it was nuts. How real was the scene with uh, G Alpha Thompson Jr. where you ran into the rival gang um, and he didn't have a gun, but he did. He allegedly did That was embarrassing. Gun. That was was a, it? That was embarrassing because I picked him up that day. Yeah. Uh, the, the, in the movie that's a red Mercedes, I had a, a green Volvo, a 264 GLE. I'd picked him up and the, 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 the that part of the film uh, has got artistic license. But in reality, what happened is he's in the passenger seat. I've just picked him up. We've stopped at a set of traffic lights and the, the, we can name. The Banks Brothers. Yeah. Yeah. The Banks Brothers were coming back from signing on their DHSS because they've all got the same initial, right? Some of them with a big coats on. And it's one of these surreal moments. I'm waiting for the traffic lights to go. See them, they see me. <laughs> the coats go open. And luckily, it's birdshot they've got. But right on the windscreen where I'm all. Five or six shots off Hepward. So, as you do, <laughs> right through the red light. Thompson screaming at me, uh, take me down, I need to see my dad. I don't think they knew I was in the car. And I'm thinking, what the f why? Anyway, so as I'm trying to say, I need one of them. I'm going back. And that's when he leaned in the car and he's at a shoulder holster. Mm. So I scared. said, so what are you doing now? I'm going to speak to my dad. All right, all right. That's when I knew there was some... These, these are the people that killed his fucking... His, his gran. Yeah. You know, they want to bring it on, bring it on. Luckily for me, it was birdshot. But I got arrested driving back up. Oh, so you didn't make it into the house? That time? Uh, not that time, no. Not that time? Not that time, no. What can we talk about, about the time you did make it into the house on YouTube? <laughs> it, it wasn't through the front door. No. <laughs> it was a, a steel band through a, black win a back window. Mm. But that's never been mentioned, so we'll leave that one. Yeah, we'll leave that one. Why did you fall out of Arthur Thompson? Uh, when I was arrested in Rossi, I thought I was protected. Uh, I got a set of keys, which was for a Daimler. Uh, I was given the address. I was familiar with the place because he, he, he used to have a boat down there. So for me to be on the run, to get down there, uh, I've got a car that's no mine. I'm on a ferry that's no mine. I've got a set of keys for a place that's no mine. Uh, my girlfriend, Anne, uh, Anne at that time, was 
six months pregnant. Looking for me, a uh, couple of covert phone calls. I managed to get somebody to take her down on the ferry. Now, if they knew I was there, they'd have arrested me at the ferry. Right? People said, ah, oh, you stayed the night. I never stayed the night. I was on there for fucking lessons. So we'd, we went shopping, watched the, foot, watched the football game, and they came in at night. We never even stayed the night. Mm. They knew I was there. Incidentally, I reviewed some of the information and the police officer who was the firearms expert on the island confirmed that his boss in Glasgow had asked him to look out for a Daimler vehicle. At that address. So they knew that the warrant was already there. By the time I go to trial and I look through it, it's somebody who's very well versed in legal stuff and said, if I'll ever read it that want, I'm reading it. He said, when did you get arrested? And I was like, on that same day. So that, that's a process that might take half an hour, might take an hour, signed on the island before I even get there. Magic. Mm, bad smell about that one. And was Junior really plotting against his own dad? Uh, what happened there was, his dad wasn't really, uh, his dad was old school. Mm. He didn't, you probably heard the story about the mafia and how some people liked the drug, some people didn't like the drug. So young Arthur, he was dabbling into it, but not to a great extent that he's going to be fucking a, a drug dealer. But what had happened was when I got arrested on the holiday home in 24A a Gale Street in Rossi, there was a list, handwritten list. Cocaine, self, black. It's not his handwriting. So they knew what he was doing. That's why he got fitted up. So I got arrested on the 12th of December 1984, and he was arrested in January thereafter. Because I think that just, when they got that, they know his handwriting, fingerprints. Could have got his dad into trouble, because on the reverse side of the envelope was a design for a window that his dad was making for somewhere else, could have been used as corroboration for a conspiracy. So that, that's when I knew there was a lack of trust there. So your two friends, um, I believe, was it Jimmy and... Johnny. Johnny. And the film. Yeah, but that's not their real names, no. Name, no. Were murdered by Arthur Thompson's gang. How much of the story is that true? Um, uh, the, what, what Reg uh, Mackay, uh, my literary partner, ha had done is he focused on what's the word on the street for? So I'm in prison, I don't know what, when I said. Yeah. So, so I'm listening to people when I go, word in the street is this happened, that happened, this happened, that's gossip. So what he said is, we're going to use the best part of the gossip and we're going to put it into the book and we'll hear what it says. What that Reg Mackay wrote about was a load of bollocks because it happened like this. <laughs> <laughs> Reg was very clever, honestly. Supremely clever. So we, we got more and more and more and more information. Bearing in mind it's still the two live murder inquiries. Uh, some of the people who've been involved in are no longer there. Uh, there's other people who are there, uh, and they might not be there for too long either. Uh, these sort of things don't go away too easy. Uh, but the fact that they were betrayed by a phone call was uh, was a hard one. Yeah, was a hard one. And were they displayed at the funeral pr uh, procession? Uh, that, the dead bodies. Uh, see, see, there's two different things. That, uh, that there's a journalistic story about it, where if you look at the logistics, Arthur Thompson and his son, who was buried, the graveyard is 500 yards from. So why would he need to travel three miles to go and do that? If he did do it, I don't know if he did do it, and if he did do it, that's him showing the other people, look who's lying on there. Don't know if it happened, I'm in prison. But I think logistically, if you're going to bury somebody, 
what why did he do to others? Five hundred yards away. Uh, could have happened. I don't. I don't know. Uh, where they where they displayed, uh, they were they were obviously somewhere overnight. Uh, all this talk about they were shot up the anus and all the rest. Of it. Uh, I've got a friend of mine that that seen the autopsy reports. Uh, they were shot in the head uh, once and shot in the heart, shot in the chest. That must have been so devastating. You're inside and you hear the news of their deaths. Yeah. How did it affect you? It affected me when a certain prison officer lit a newspaper up and put it under my door and said, you're going to end up like your friends. And I thought, really? Well, you know who I am. I'm trying to stamp the flames out. I said, well, you know who I am. Open the spy hole and let me see who you are. I fucking got so we had good screws, good prison officers, bad prison officers. So that's how I learned about it. They let that newspaper and flung it on the middle of that day. Fuck. Yeah. I did cry. Of course. I did cry quite quite a fair bit. I did. And I, and I, and I don't mind that. Mm. It was just something that was a shock to the system and I'm thinking. I'm not saying it would have happened if I was out, that people were saying, oh, you're lucky you could kiss the four walls and you survived that. I went to trial and I got released and I stayed in Glasgow for two years. So what was the problem with that? The jail never saved me. 